Okay, so we want to use a camera, and a camera is a metaphor and class that uh, represents just basically which direction the view should be rendered from, and it's also uh, pretty important for converting between um, just different coordinate systems, namely the screen and world coordinate system and, and vice versa. So we're going to create a camera here because we use it in a number of places. And we're just going to say fun camera is, um, uh, well, let's actually define a method. It's, um, for this example, it's going to be an orthographic camera, but it doesn't have to be. Um, actually, yeah, we're just going to return this. Um, one of the most important early decisions in the game is what you want your units to be. And uh, I think it's fairly standard, or at least this is what I go with, to use 32 pixels per meter. And that means, you know, 32 pixels of screen space equals one meter of world space. And this is important because this is the, the world camera, so when it asks for the viewport width and the viewport height, it doesn't mean pixels, it means whatever the native units of the orthographic camera is. So if we want it to be like 15 meters wide and 10 meters high, you know, this is where we would specify that. So um, let's just say like, uh, so we want the, the viewport width, and that is, um, you want, you know, even though it's not pixels, you, you want it to be sort of based on how, how big the screen is. So if you say gdx.graphics.width, this is how many pixels wide the screen is. And if we divide this by 32, that's now how many meters wide the screen is. So there's um, viewport width and height. And so now that's our, that's our basic camera. Uh, the last thing I like to do is sort of center it so that like right now it's still on zero zero even though our screen extends from zero to ten width or something. So here you, you need to say um, like uh, viewport width 12 by 2 and viewport height 12 by 2 and anytime you make camera changes you need to be sure to um, call update. Ah, so it actually wants a vector. If you look at the position, because you know it's a camera, and in some ways LibGDX is really sort of a, a 3D engine. So even the orthographic camera still expects a 3D point in space. So um, yeah, so it takes three points here. So the next thing, now that we have our camera, the next thing we need to do is actually use it. So we're just going to go up to our rendering system, which is right above it, and we just say private val camera. Um, you need to make sure you inject the same type that we're actually returning. So even though even though orthographic camera is a camera, you need to make sure that you actually inject orthogra orthographic camera. Um, so. If you look at batch, uh, batch actually has its own projection matrix, which is sort of a way of saying camera. Um, cameras themselves also have many matrices, so the right way to sort of copy the camera to your sprite batch is you say match that projection matrix equals camera dot combined. Um, there's a number of different matrices that cameras have, but sort of the the main one that you'll be using is probably combined. And so now, if, uh, if you play, now you get your image, but it is very large. And sort of as an interesting uh, notion, if you look at each square, each square is actually roughly like 32 pixels, and or exactly 32 pixels. And if we change our position to, you know, one, one unit up. 
uh, it's, you know, 32 pixels moved up from the corner. So the positioning is actually right. Like, we do actually want one, you know, one world unit to correspond to 32 pixels. So that's working just fine. But we don't want the image to be uh, scaled up by a factor of 32, because that's, uh, that's too large, obviously. So what we need to do is we need to scale the image back down. And the way we do that is, if you look at draw here, there's actually a bunch of different overloads, but the one we're interested in is the one directly below, which is width and height. Which instead of using the width of the image, because it's it's it, the, width of the width of the image is 400 pixels or something, but it doesn't know the pixels. It's drawing it as 400 units. So really, what we want to do is. Um, take that image's uh, width and divide that by 32. Image the height, divide by 32. And now things are looking back to normal. So this works, but it's not very good software design because we have this magic 32 constant repeated in four different places now. And any time you need to, to draw something, chances are you're going to need to do similar scaling. So one way you could handle this is um, create a companion object somewhere that says, like, uh, you know, pixel, uh, pixels per meter is 32. And, you know, that, that works, and then you can, you can copy this thing in here. Um, but this looks sort of ugly, and it's not very elegant, um, and, I don't know, it just, there's a better way to do, to do it. And the way I usually find myself doing this is using extension methods again. Um, everything that we've been working with so far, these, these widths and heights, they're all integers. So if you say val int dot um, pixels to meters, which returns a float, and you can calculate that by just saying this divided by 32. Now, instead of having this big ugly division here, you can just say take the image that width and convert it from pixels to meters. And this is much cleaner in my opinion. It'd still be great if Kotlin had a notion of units, um, so that you could, you know, specify that this method only took pixels, and if you try to pass it meters, it either fails or converts it for you. Um, but uh, this is the, this is the next best thing. Ta -da. Okay, so we have this basic rendering engine, and it renders our little sprites. Um, uh, next time, I'm going to start talking a bit more about the um, about what it looks like to incorporate a physics engine, uh, Box2D, which is the, the one that comes with lib, libgdx. So stay tuned for that.